Isaiah the prophet is considered one of the greatest men of God who have walked this earth. His name means the Lord is salvation, reflecting his message of redemption and hope. Throughout his ministry, Isaiah proclaimed the importance of faithfulness to the Lord, delivering both harsh and comforting messages with the promise of restoration. Another recurring theme in Isaiah's preaching was the Messiah. Even though he lived about 700 years before the birth of Jesus, he prophesied in great detail about the coming of the Son of God into the world. Moreover, the prophet also spoke about the end times and the second coming of Jesus, when he will establish a new heaven and a new earth. Let us see what Isaiah said regarding these matters. As the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And it is precisely about these revelations from God through the prophet Isaiah that I want to discuss with you today. The book of Isaiah contains 66 chapters filled with prophecies and warnings that are relevant for our days. Before we proceed, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscribe button below the video, and next to it, you will find the bell icon. It is important to activate that bell to receive all notifications whenever I post a new video. Daily, I share messages, prayers, and content to strengthen your walk with God. Come and join me on this journey, all right? Let's go. The first warning from Isaiah is that the wicked will be consumed by darkness. Let's read what is written in the first verses of Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. In this entire chapter, God reveals to the prophet the grandeur and glory of the heavenly Jerusalem, as well as the triumph of the church. Isaiah's vision is very similar to the vision that the Apostle John had in Revelation 21 and 22, even though many centuries separate these revelations. This confirms the truthfulness and consistency of God's word. In that celestial reality, there will be eternal peace, where every pain, groaning, and tear will be comforted. The horrors of the past will no longer afflict, for the Lord will reign over all. And that is truly marvelous, dear brothers and sisters. The magnitude of this reality is difficult to comprehend, but it is important to note that there are portions of this passage that indicate a different situation for those who choose to continue in sin without repenting of their deeds. Isaiah describes that darkness will envelop them, for the sun and moon will no longer exist, and the light that illuminates the children of God will come directly from the Holy Spirit. We do not know the day or the hour when Jesus will return, so we must always be ready, doing the will of the Father, fighting against sin, and resisting the temptations of the devil. For sooner or later, the trumpets will sound, and those who are not on Christ's side will be enveloped by darkness, just as the Egyptians were during the ten plagues of Egypt. Let us see what the Bible says about this future reality. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days, yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. When darkness fell upon Egypt during those three days, everything came to a standstill. No Egyptian could accomplish anything, as darkness completely dominated. This was a consequence of the disobedience and stubbornness of the Egyptian people. However, in the end times, according to the words of the prophet Isaiah, the darkness will be even more intense and enduring. However, it is important to emphasize that God is and will always be the light for those who love Him. Those who choose to reject God will live eternally in darkness. The second warning from Isaiah is that those who fail to discern between right and wrong will pay a high price for their choices. Now let's turn to chapter 5 of the book of Isaiah where he warns us that those who fail to distinguish between good and evil and consider themselves wise in their own eyes will not escape God's judgment. Thus says the word of the Lord, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 
Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Often when we think of spiritual warfare, we imagine angels fighting against demons. While that can happen, most spiritual battles take place in our everyday lives. They arise before us when we are faced with choices between right and wrong, good and evil, and these decisions can have a significant impact on our lives. That's why Jesus said the following, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. And it is precisely this battle between good and evil that our society has been facing lately. We must reflect on whether we will be faithful in our marriage, whether we will treat our spouse with love and respect. We must decide whether we will act with honesty in our work or seek dishonest gains. We need to choose whether we will stand with those who seek the truth or join the corrupt in pursuit of personal benefits. The worst part is when we choose the wrong side and still try to justify our decisions by saying, there's nothing wrong with that. This is being wise in our own eyes and ignoring what the Word of God defines as right and wrong, acting according to the desires of our hearts. However, the Bible teaches us that the human heart is deceitful and corrupt. Before making any decision, we should seek God's guidance and always choose the path of goodness. Otherwise, we will pay a high price when Jesus returns. The third warning is that God allows bad things to happen in order to awaken us. God deeply loves His creation, but the world has been affected by sin. In this moment of the end times, He allows bad things to happen on earth as a warning of what is to come. Let's read what the prophet Isaiah wrote in chapter 26. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. In this passage, the ordinances refer to the catastrophes, tragedies, and adverse events that occur on earth. For example, the current coronavirus pandemic has caused suffering and fear worldwide, resulting in millions of deaths in a short period of time. However, this does not mean that God specifically sent the virus as a punishment. He allowed it to happen so that we may recognize our dependence on His power and mercy and seek His salvation before even more terrible things occur. In the book of Revelation, the Apostle John describes the vision of the seven bowls of God's wrath that will be poured out upon the followers of the Antichrist after the sounding of the seventh trumpet. These bowls bring disasters and calamities, symbolizing divine judgment. Isaiah's purpose in alerting us to these events is to urge us to surrender our lives to Jesus and live according to His Word, so that we may find security and salvation amidst difficult times. Amen. The fourth warning. God is good, but He is also just. Who has never heard at least once in their life that phrase, God is good all the time? And that is true. The Lord is so good that He gave the life of His own Son so that we could be freed from sin and be reconciled to Him through the blood of Christ. But He will not be good to everyone in the end times. In Isaiah 24, the prophet said, The earth is broken up, the earth is split asunder, the earth is violently shaken. The earth reels like a drunkard, it sways like a hut in the wind. So heavy upon it is the guilt of its rebellion that it falls never to rise again. In that day, the Lord will punish the powers in the heavens above and the kings on the earth below. They will be herded together like prisoners bound in a dungeon. They will be shut up in prison and be punished after many days. As we can see in the third warning, those who chose to serve the devil instead of serving Jesus will be punished with the judgments that will come with the seven bowls. And all of this will not happen because God is evil, but because Christ is holy and he cannot dwell in the midst of sin. In chapter 13, the prophet Isaiah warns us, See, the day of the Lord is coming a cruel day, with wrath and fierce anger to make the land desolate and destroy the sinners within it. The stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. I will punish the world for its evil, the wicked for their sins. I will put an end to the arrogance of the haughty, and will humble the pride of the ruthless. So if you don't want to be part of that group of people who will be condemned to hell, 
believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus and live according to his teachings. Accept this great love of God for you, because in eternity with him there will be no more pain or suffering. Amen. The fifth warning is, seek the Lord while there is still time. Who can guarantee that we will wake up alive tomorrow? The Bible says that our life is like a breath and our days are like a passing shadow. That is why the prophet Isaiah warned us to surrender our lives to the Lord as soon as possible, because we do not know if we will have another opportunity tomorrow. Let's see what he said in chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. No matter the mistakes you have made in the past, God is not concerned about that. What he wants is for you to repent of your sins and surrender your life to him right now. And for that, you need to take three important steps that I will show you now. The first step is to confess your sins to God. The Bible says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. As we can see, God's forgiveness is a promise for all of us. However, the decision to receive that forgiveness and repent of our sins is up to each one of us. Therefore, my brother, confess your sins to the Lord and believe that you have already been forgiven. The second step is to choose to walk in the light. In the Bible it is written, God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. Walking in the light means abandoning a life of sin and allowing Jesus to transform our minds and hearts. When we do this, we give Him the freedom to transform us daily and find strength to overcome sin. The third step is to no longer blame yourself after confessing your sins to Christ. He has already forgiven you, and we should not dwell in guilt. The enemy will try everything to accuse us and say that we are too sinful to be forgiven by God. Even if we feel dirty and unworthy of the Lord's blessings, we must embrace His forgiveness by faith. Amen. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we must understand that Jesus is about to return, and the prophet Isaiah was used by God to give us important warnings about what to do and what not to do in these days. Christ paid a high price for our lives, and we must not waste this opportunity to be saved, as we have seen. The last days will be terrible, and you do not have to suffer with the wicked. But for that, you must respond to the call that God is making to you today. Amen. If you like this message, I ask you to share it in WhatsApp groups and on Facebook. Let us spread the message of the gospel, and follow me here because every day I will help you in your walk with God. I will be waiting for you in the next video. May God bless you.